Stunt doubles are an interesting concept. Imagine being able to substitute someone else in your place during an especially risky situation. In the event that the circumstances turn out unfavorably, the stunt double takes the beating and the star of the show will remain unscathed. The whole show will benefit because the stunt double is expendable and production can continue in the event he gets hurt. Modern corporations have taken this idea of stunt doubles into day-to-day -day practice for project management. Enter the SPV. SPV stands for Special Purpose Vehicle. The idea behind this is to create a separate entity, a totally new company, distant from the parent company that is designed to take on those especially risky projects. If the stunt goes bad, then the parent company does not suffer. However, if the project goes as planned, then the parent company gains the benefit of getting the perfect shot. So now the question becomes, how do we structure the project company? Obviously, not every stuntman will pass as the star of the show, and not every project structure will work for the task at hand. The idea is to bend, but not break. You will never find an exact match for a stunt double, but you work with what you have and design the camera angles and the makeup to allow for a believable performance. The same is true for the project. Not every SPV structure will work perfectly for the task at hand, but you take what you can in terms of contract negotiations and other forms of risk allocation to best suit the goal. The biggest benefit of the SPV is that they are secondary but still provide some advantage to the parent company. Could the performance survive without the stuntmen? Probably, but the doubles can bring added benefit to the movie. Could the parent company survive without the SPV? Probably, but again, some added benefit is attained that wasn't there before. Neither the SPV nor the stunt double is the main focus. However, the addition of them to the production will bring about an added bonus. Also, SPVs are temporary. The project has a finite start and end. Therefore, the project company should have a finite start and end. The stuntman has a specialized defined role. His job may only take a few days to complete, then he is done and goes home. Meanwhile, the show continues. In comparison, the SPV has a special role. It performs its function, then closes its doors while the parent company still remains to conduct business. It would be pointless to keep the stuntman around and pay him when there are no stunts, just like it is pointless to keep a project company around and fund it without a project. One of the most attractive benefits to a large corporation with regards to the SPVs is the idea that the SPV, in a sense, takes the fight far from the parent company. All the risk is mitigated to remote locations by way of off-balance financing. It's similar to an airplane and an aircraft carrier. The aircraft carrier is the parent company and the airplane is the SPV. The plane removes the risk far from the carrier and is, in effect, removing the fight off-balance. This way, if the project takes an unfavorable turn, it will not sink the larger ship. The alternative would be to have a battle cruiser where the parent company is the chief bearer of the risk. Both are capable of dealing with risk, however the battle cruiser will allow the enemy to get closer to the parent company and sanction a riskier situation. The cruiser will exchange fire directly, whereas the aircraft carrier will allow other vehicles to deal with the enemy on its behalf and still obtain some benefit from their success. One thought to keep in mind is where do we attack with SPVs and where do we let the battle cruisers take over? SPVs are expensive, however expendable. The initial development costs associated with new planes are high compared to the actual cost of the plane. To design and engineer a plane is much more expensive and time-consuming than to manufacture it, just as designing and structuring an SPV is much more time-consuming than implementing it. The cost associated to the parent company in terms of assets and resources outweighs the cost of the SPV. That being said, if the benefit from winning the battle is less than the cost of mobilizing an SPV, then the obvious decision would be to use the battleship. However, if the expected cost of failure is greater than the expected benefit of success, then the SPV should be deployed. As expected, the probable benefit of project success is about equal no matter which method of management is used. However, the probable cost of failure is not because, as discussed earlier, the cost of a ship is far greater than the cost of a plane. Most corporations would rather lose a plane than an entire ship.
Imagine, if you will, a shipping yard. Goods and shipments are coming from all over the globe into this harbor in a seemingly unorganized manner. At every hour of the day, new ships come into port and deliver cargo in boxes that can at times be undistinguishable. Without proper training, following one crate and keeping proper inventory of the goods can be problematic. The noise of the ships and the flow of the workers only add to the confusion. Any attempt to find one particular package from one supplier carrying one particular object can be something of a headache when there are thousands of objects in thousands of packages from thousands of suppliers. Now, imagine a P.O. box. The box has one point of entry and one point of exit. Following goods through the process is much simpler. All that goes through is specific to the box's renter and all the confusion at the shipping yard is forgotten. This illustrates one of the key advantages to the SPV. With such a short streamlined operation, following the money and identifying problems is much easier. In the larger corporate style of management and finance, it is hard to tell the success of a single project as long as money is coming from multiple projects to one harbor. However, if the project is your one and only project, it is easier to grasp an understanding of its progress and success as the money will be easier to track through the P.O. Box. The decision to set up a P.O. Box is up to the corporation. Often, if the project is unprecedented and its success or failure must be carefully monitored, an SPV may be implemented to keep an eye on the cash flows. The day-to-day -day operations of the corporation will not need an SPV as the methods of these operations and standard practices are already tried and true. The SPV, whether seen as a stub double or airplane or P.O. box, can provide some benefit to a large corporation in an innovative and creative way. Every project is unique. Therefore, every SPV must be unique to best serve the task at hand. They serve their purpose for only a short while, then are no more. They provide a safer way to mitigate risks on projects that would otherwise prove too close for comfort for many corporations. And lastly, they prove smaller governing entities lead to tighter control of cash flow and a clearer focus of progress.